All right, so today we're gonna go for a bit of a walk. It's actually our second walk today. And um, one of the things I wanna talk about on our walk while we're waiting for my son, Rowan, to join us, who should be here any minute, hey. um, is the most important thing that you need to think about when you're designing a piece of property. And that is observation. Um, as you guys might know, or maybe have uh, seen in other videos, we got a quarter section. And it doesn't really matter if you're designing 160 acres or if you're designing um, five acres or one acre or 5,000 square feet. The more time spent observing, the better your design is gonna be. And so every day I am going out with the kids to make some, did you hear that? I don't know if that, the mic picked it up, but there's a uh, grouse everywhere and they're just beating the, the drums that, that are their chests. Um, it's really great. Anyhow, there's lots to observe here. And so one of the things that we've been spending kind of more time on is our inner zones. And so um, our inner zones are kind of behind me here towards the house over there. And we're gonna make some pretty radical moves here in the next little while. We're gonna take down a bunch of trees. Um, however, we're not just going to, my daughter's trying to hit the camera. Um, we're not just gonna cut those trees down, we're actually gonna turn them into timber. Um, one of the sayings that we have in the PDC is that when people move from um, urban kind of context to rural context, they get drunk on space. And so we're gonna make sure that we're not getting drunk on space and that we're designing our inner zones out first. So I'll be making a bunch of videos on that, um, specifically how we design out our zones one and two. Um, it's pretty much one of the most important zones on any property and um, it's the one that people usually get wrong or they spend the least amount of time on thinking that it's easy. Um, but it's really where most of your productivity um, occurs for kind of home consumption. And if you get it wrong and you start adding systems further afield from your zone one and your two, you're going to end up uh, feeling like a chicken with your head cut off. And um, <laughs> my friend Dakota has a saying that um, running on a hamster wheel, if you run fast enough, can feel like you're climbing a ladder, but in fact, you're just actually running around in circles. Um, and so we really don't want that to happen. We're being very cautious to make sure that our systems that are close to the home are really efficient. And then as we have extra time and energy and resources, we are going to start developing further out. Today, we're gonna to walk over to um, a really special place on our property. It turns out that we have springs coming out of the side of hills. Um, and these springs are flowing beautiful, clean, fresh water um, at a fairly high rate. And as a result of that, we are going to set up a ram pump and we're going to pump water into a series of tanks that we've just purchased, which will then end up feeding a gravity fed watering system for our livestock. So all power free and um, that will make um, grazing our animals really easy in the sense that we can move them on a regular basis so that we don't, um, I don't know if you can see the rain tanks from here. No, you can't. Um, we'll be able to move them very regularly, which means we're gonna avoid overgrazing. It means that our grasslands are gonna to continue to improve. Um, and I've designed out the pipeline such that um, the pipeline that we're gonna put in to manage all of our water so that we have the most access to the most number of paddocks possible. Um, which will allow us to use all of our inner zones that are close to that pipeline for grazing. Because of the way our property is designed, we can also set up gravity water on the other parts of the property as well with similar ram pumps. You wanna say hi? What do you wanna to say to YouTube? You obviously want some attention. So as we observe, one of the kind of offshoots is that our kids get to see this from the ground up. Uh, which I'm really excited about. So let's head over to the springs. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how we're gonna set those up and uh, which will be a, a kind of a nice um, intro to um, future videos that we're gonna make as we get those systems all, all set up. Are you videoing? Water bottle! No, you don't need a water bottle. Spring! Oh sure, okay. Bring your backpack.
What do you want to say to YouTube? Uh, YouTube? Yeah. We're about to see some beavers. Well, depends if they're there or not. But I think they will. Because beavers are no nocturnal. I don't listen to the stuff that my mom and dad do, but I still listen to some. Naomi, what's the backpack for? I am carrying a water bottle so that when we get to the spring, we can collect some of the fresh mountain water that um, the old owners, they stack a tube into the, into the, um, the slope, the side where there's a stream. There's a, there's a stream coming out, so there's water that comes out of the pipe, and it's, a, it's kind of a hose. So I can put the water bottle that I brought under that, under that hose or so of water, and I will, I will get a full water bottle of nice, nice water. And it's super fresh. Like, it's some of the freshest water ever. It's amazing. Um, and are you going to make them raven proof? <laughs> are the solar panels going to be raven proof? Yeah. Yeah, probably. How did you make them raven proof? I'm going to put a rowan out there. How did you make them ro uh, raven proof? Rowan is going to be my anti raven patrol. Oh, so what you're saying is that you're going to build us this awesome tree for it. Yeah. And I can always be playing in it, but in plain view of the raven so that they can always see. Yeah, exactly. Oh, um, now I understand. So as we're walking around the property, one of the things that we're looking for um, are water harvesting opportunities. So as we came out of the snow melt, I would have liked to have made more videos, but it's just so crazy <laughs> with the everything going on that I didn't have a chance to make videos. But uh, one of the design processes that we use is we download contour maps. So we have the contour map creator tool, which is at online con um, contourmapgenerator.com, sorry. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes. And then as designers, we walk around our property and we look for opportunities. And so here's one of the ones that our contour map picked up. It's gonna be hard to see it in the camera, but there's a giant pond just waiting to be built right there. <laughs> And what's really unique about this pond is that we get a lot of snow here. So this field gets two to three feet of snow, especially because of the shelter belt over there, which is westward facing. So it picks up a lot of snow melt. And this is the highest point on our property. So I believe that it's possible for us to fill this pond on an annual basis. And if we design the pond properly, then we'll be able to put uh, a lock pipe or a siphon pipe over the pond wall, which will allow us to have gravity fed water all the way to the bottom of the property, which is pretty unique. Um, the first thing we're gonna do when we get set up here is we're actually gonna put a, a couple of tanks which I just talk about, talked about um, in the corner of the property right behind me here. These tanks are gonna get filled up from a ram pump which is going to be powered by a spring which is coming out of the side of a hill at the bottom of our property in the drainage that we're just about to go into right now. And because the spring water is so clean, if we want to, we can actually drink out of it. We can plumb this into the house and have pressurized spring water uh, from the top of our property. Down the road, if we wanted to, we could actually put a big series of tanks underground right here and then if we plumbed a pipe all the way to the house, then um, we would have year round spring water going to our house even through the winter time. So that's a pretty unique feature that I would never have dreamed of having in my wildest dreams. And we've just started to uncover all of the little secrets uh, of the property just through observation. Yeah. Ben. What? Cool. All right, so we're just about to go down into the drainage and you can see we've got a creek down there and I think that the creek is about 70 feet below the top of the property right up there. And so with ram pumps, they are able to pump water 
at a ratio of about 10 to 1. So for every foot you drop, you can pump it up 10 feet. And the 10 to 1 ratio seems to also be applicable to um, the volume. So if you move 10 liters of water through the ram pump, then you're going to be able to pump one liter up to the top of the hill. And so um, you kind of need to have a lot of water to be able to operate with those ratios because you don't, if you, if you have a shortage of water, you're not going to want to waste the nine liters that you can't get to the top of the hill. Let's come over here, kids. We're just going to walk over to where the springs are just to show you what I'm talking about. And then that'll give you a sense of what we're going to do once we start to develop the springs. There's also a ton of beaver activity over here, and so that's another consideration that we've been thinking about. The beaver dams actually create some really great head pressure, enough for a, um, a ram pump to work. So, this uh, pipe was here, the owners must have known about this spring. Um, there's actually a whole bunch of springs along this slope here. There's a really cool one right here that happens to, to be right underneath this aspen. Oop, I'm falling into it. Um, and so you can see down there, it's the coolest spring ever. It just kind of pops out from underneath the tree. Um, <laughs> I just can't even believe that one. And so that one's flowing pretty good. I think that's at least a couple gallons a minute. Um, you can kind of get a sense of the flow there in the creek down there. There's also some dribbles coming out of this slope right here in the hill. And then this is kind of the really cool one. <laughs> There's a pipe and I don't really know why it's doing this, but there's a bit of a pulsation happening. And so it kind of goes really full and then it slows down. Man, that water tastes so good. I can't even believe how good that water tastes. I cannot wait to have a few thousand gallons of it at the top of my hill. Um, and so if we keep kind of going down here, we'll really get a sense of the water flowing across the ground. And oh, um, like that's flowing it at least Oh, sorry. I don't know if you can see that there. Let me zoom the camera in. That's flowing at at least five or five to ten gallons a minute for sure. Um, so pretty amazing. And then there's another <laughs> spring coming out of the side of the hill right there. It's pretty hard to see on this lens. Um, and that's probably another ten gallons a minute coming out of that side of that hill. So basically what I'm thinking, because that's about, you know, 10 feet high, we're going to build a spring box all the way around it. I'm going to put some cedar posts into the ground, build a wall, fill it up with sand and uh, gravel, and, uh, and then we'll put a through wall fitting, um, a pipe, which will then get um, run to the ram pump, and that will drive the water, um, or provide the, the hammer, essentially, the water hammer, which is what the, the force that's actually getting the water to the top of the hill. And then the pipe is going to cross the creek over here and go all the way up to the top of the hill over there, which will provide us with really clean water for our livestock and even for our own personal consumption in the house. All right, folks, um, more on this project soon as we Get ready to develop the spring box and build the ramp pump. I'll take you guys through it step by step. Hey guys, let's get a flow rate. Um, let's that. figure out a flow rate. Yeah. Okay, so. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. Let's get, let's get, so this is, this is one liter, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's figure out how, how fast it takes to fill up one liter. Ready? Okay, ready? One. Yeah. Hold on. Try again. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand, six one thousand. Holy crap! One liter in six seconds. 
that's 10 liters per minute. So that's that one pipe there is putting out 10 liters per minute, which means that it's about two and a half gallons a minute, just out of that one pipe. And that's one spring. So I know we're getting at least that much water in the other three springs that uh, that's just not as concentrated. So if we combine a bunch of these springs together, um, I think it's easy to imagine a 10 or 15 gallon per minute spring, um, which means that if you take 10% of that, that's one and a half gallons a minute that we should be able to get up that hill over there, which is absolutely amazing. And keep in mind, that's one and a half gallons per minute, 24 hours a day. So that means every hour, we're gonna have uh, roughly 90 gallons an hour. And so over 10 hours, that's 900 gallons over 10 hours, 1800 gallons over 24, and uh, uh, 180, what's that? Wow, awesome. Um, so anyways, that's a lot of water. That's more than gonna be adequate for all the livestock that we're gonna grow on this property and even for our own consumption. Okay, awesome, talk soon guys.